What is up everyone? This is Jacob the Techie and today we're going to compare three different video editors that I've been using on my Chromebook and which one of the three is my favorite so far for editing my YouTube videos. Watch this short intro next and then let's get into it. So that short video you just watched is what I normally use as an intro. And as always, I make it a point to edit all of my videos on a Chromebook because that is what I use as my main computer. In fact, this video you're watching right now was edited on a Chromebook. Now you may have heard comments like, Chromebooks are not real computers, or you can't do any real work on a Chromebook, or my favorite, I can't use a Chromebook to edit video. Well. I'm here to tell you that as long as you find the right app or the right service, you definitely can edit video on a Chromebook. I do. In the three months that I've been running this tech channel, I've edited videos using one app and two online video editors. I've also spent a considerable amount of time trying to learn not just how to use the tools, but all the basics of lighting, etc. because shooting video is not just about the video editing. So I've made some adjustments and upgrades and one of those adjustments has been to settle into what I've decided will be my full-time editor on my Chromebook. So to help you guys with your decision, I want to show you the features that I have found to be the most important in each one of these tools and which one does it better in my opinion. So without further ado, here they are. All right, so the first service that we're going to review is called Flixier. Um, now Flixier was the first service I ever tried, the first online video editor I ever tried. And um, I was very happy with it um, up until, I guess, a few weeks ago when I discovered other options. Um, this served me well for a while. I started out with their $10 a month plan, which is their starter. And um, I moved up to the Pro because I wanted to try out 4K exports, which is only available on the $25 plan and up. Now, if you want to get a cheaper rate, you can always go with an annual plan. But again, this is going to be a commitment for a year. Um, and I was not ready to make that commitment. So I am still actually at the monthly plans. As far as features, um, there is a free plan as well that you can sign up for if you want to try out the service. However, please note that you're going to be extremely limited in the amount of um, video that you can export the amount of time that you can export so for example you have a 10 minute limit on your export time a month so 10 minutes a month is really nothing but if you just want to try out the service you want to see what they offer what features they have this will be a good option to start out with but if you're serious about making video and you want to try out this editor i suggest you go with the personal plan which gives you 50 gigs of storage now, be aware that you're going to eat through these quickly if you're going to be uploading videos weekly, let's say. This fills up really fast. You can upgrade storage little by little, depending on need. I still have not had to upgrade because I have gone back and deleted things that I didn't need. Uh, but just be aware of that. Now, if you want to export in 4K, you do have to go to their pro plan, which is um, this one right here, um, which is um, $25 a month. So that one, um, you will have to pick if you want to export in 4K. However, if you're good with 1080p, then just stick to the personal plan. Now, Flixier, it's very good. It's very fast at exporting. It, actually, of all three that I've tried, this is the fastest. I don't know how they're doing. I don't know what magic they're cooking up over there. But... Um, there are some shortcomings that I found if I'm trying to edit a video that has a lot of layers or has a lot of like um, audio tracks. Um, so when I'm editing here, I try to keep the least amount of layers possible. Um, it does tend to kind of like move things around on its own, which is bizarre. Um, I edited an entire video and it came back the next day and everything was completely out of order after I had spent so much time making sure that the layers were in their place. So I did not like that, obviously, because I had to start over. Um, another um, shortcoming that I find with this um, is that their transitions 
they're not bad. I mean, they're good, but they're very basic. And the only thing that looks really exciting is their glitch effects. They only have one though, and that glitch effect can be kind of janky. And when you play it back, it does tend to look like it's it's not very smooth. Um, so I experimented with it for a little bit, but I kind of stopped using it because it, it looked kind of weird. Um, other than that, you know, they do have a good amount of transitions, but nothing crazy, nothing that's going to make you go, wow, this video looks amazing. Um, they do have motion titles, which is very handy if you want to add, you know, you know how we say subscribe and all that. They do have a lot of these already built in that you can use. It's all stock and they're tied to a lot of uh, stock providers such as Unsplash, Pixabay, Pexels, and uh, Giphy. So you can, uh, you can search for any kind of stock uh, footage that you want and you'll be able to find it here and you can use that in your video, which is extremely handy because you don't have to go around uh, searching for stock uh, footage or stock music. They do include also stock audio um, and you can search by genre, you can search by many different things. So they do provide a lot on their $10 plan that, you know, it's a bang for your buck. Um, the overlays that they have are not, again, same thing with the transitions. They're not crazy. It's just very basic presentation type um, overlays. Um, text, they also just have, they have some animated stuff, but it's, I don't know. I just, I'm not really like loving them. But they're there. You can also add simple text and you can also import your own fonts. So you're not limited, although they do have a great selection of fonts that you can use. Um, for example, I think all of the fonts that they have available are Google fonts. Um, let's see. Let me show you here real quick. Okay, so they have all of these fonts, which are Google fonts. However, I uploaded this font here, the one that's denoted here by a folder. That's something that I uploaded. So you can upload your own, like if you have a certain branding on your channel um, that you want to use your own font, you can do that with this uh, application. As far as exporting, they do have the ability to um, publish directly to YouTube. So if you do select that you want to export to YouTube, you get um, an option here to upload the thumbnail. You can set the privacy or you can schedule your video. Um, normally if I use this option, I would say that I want it unlisted and then I can go back and add extra stuff to it. You can also export to any of these really. And, you know, you can keep an extra copy of your video in multiple places, which is highly recommended. The next online video editor that we're going to cover is going to be Wave Video, which is in my opinion, the most popular out of these services so far. Um, they do offer a very cheap power plan, which is $4.99 a month. However, you're limited to publishing only 30 minutes per month at 720p resolution, which is very, very, you know, limiting. Um, they do also have a free plan if you just want to try it out. However, look at this publish time, only five minutes a month. So keep that in mind. And for cloud storage, you only get one gig. So this would be basically if you just want to try out one video, less than five minutes and you want to publish it. Um, also, resolution will be 480p, so take a note of that. Um, if you are serious about video editing with WeVideo, I suggest you go from the limit unlimited plan and above. Um, for the professional and business plans are a little bit high priced, um, unless you are running a business that profits from video editing or you need like serious, serious uh, amount of uh, stock footage available to you then if you don't need all of that, I would just go with the unlimited plan, which is, let me switch over to monthly here, will be $15.99 a month if you pay monthly. But if you go with the annual option, it's a little bit cheaper. But again, it is a commitment for a year. As far as the features, we video is a very stable uh, video editor. I, in the time that I used it, I had no issues whatsoever with things moving out of place or things glitching. So it is very stable. However, I do find that it is quite limiting in the transitions that it offers. I'm big into transitions and effect, special effects. This online video editor offers just 
the bare minimum and just basically um, what you would use if you were editing for an office, let's say, or just a business and nothing. No, if you're into marketing or anything like that, or you want to make a cool video that people are going to be amazed at, this is only going to get you so far. Now, we video does offer a lot of stock media that you can search. Um, I'm not sure which are the providers, but I'm guessing they're the same ones that Flixer uses, um, like Pixabay and Unsplash. Uh, let me show you here what the transitions are. Again, very basic, you know, crossfade, cross, cross blur, and just like what you will find in any video editor, nothing really out of the ordinary. As far as um, exporting, you do get the option to export in um, Ultra HD 4K if you do pay for the plan that includes that. And just like Flix here, you get the option to publish directly to YouTube. Lastly, we're going to talk about KineMaster, which is technically an Android app that is supported in Chromebooks. Their um, information here online uh, does have a support page where you can use hotkeys, so you can use it on the Chromebook, so you can actually use your keyboard with it. Um, they even say here running KineMaster on a Chromebook, and then it tells you that it runs with any peripherals that you have. Um, I've even tried using the audio, like to um, upload my audio directly to KineMaster, and it works great. Um, and the shortcuts are very handy, um, and you'll see why. So uh, switching over here, I'm going to show you if you, you can buy the application, but then if you use the, just download the application and you don't go for the premium plan, you're going to be very limited. A lot of the special features that they have will not be available to you. However, you can pay $40 a year. And then basically you have all the premium features for the whole year, which is a bargain in my opinion, at least. So moving on inside of the application, if you're going to start a project, basically you get an option to pick from any of these sizes, which is a very, very nice selection. Once you have a project open, you can expand and then you can really, really drill down if you need to like cut a clip or you need to um, select a certain area of the clip. Um, and they have a great uh, selection of effects and transitions. So for example, um, I'm going to go into effects. They do, uh, these are just the ones that I've downloaded to my Chromebook, but they do have a store. They call it a store, but really, um, if you do have the premium plan, they're all available to you. So if you go in here, you can download even more, um, even more effects. And basically they have effects, they have um, transitions, they have stickers, they have fonts, they have music, they have uh, sound effects and uh, graphics. And then they have a uh, green screen, like chroma key videos, and then they have images. And these are all available to use for you with the premium plan included. As far as exporting, KineMaster does not let you export directly to YouTube or to Google Drive. Basically, whatever you export, you're going to export to your Chromebooks uh, downloads folder. Or if you have an external drive connected, you can save it there as well, or you can save it to your Google Drive. And depending on the hardware that you are using, you do have the option of exporting in 4K. Um, but that is depending, like I said, on what you're running it on. When you first uh, open KineMaster, you are asked to go ahead and run an analysis. And this analysis will determine how many layers, what uh, resolution the layers can be, you know, all the stuff that you're going to be allowed to add into the program. Of course, that really depends on, I guess, how much RAM you have and, you know, how much, how powerful your Chromebook is. So if you're running this, uh, for example, I installed this on my Chromebook Duet and on my Pixel Go, and I had a lot more options on the Pixel Go. Now, downsides of using something like KineMaster is that you do have to turn on the Google Play Store if you don't already have it. The UI could use a lot of help for bigger screens, but I think considering the price, it's manageable. And you know, you it's recommended that you use it with a touchpad because if, with a mouse, you won't be able to do this uh, pinch and zoom to expand into the uh, timeline. 
So it is recommended that you use either your laptop's touchpad or an external touchpad. My favorite thing about KineMaster is the sheer amount of options that you have when it comes to transitions and um, special effects. You can do really amazing stuff with this little app. I've been so amazed at what you can do. Um, I have been able to little by little kind of learn the ins and out of this application. But um, by far, if I were to recommend an app for video editing on the Chromebook, I would definitely recommend KineMaster over any online video editor. Of course, this is gonna be, uh, your mileage may vary depending on what hardware you're running it with. But if you're using a good Chromebook with good specs, there's no reason to think that this is not gonna work out for you. I think that by now with my review, you can kind of guess which is the one that I prefer. I mean, I've grown accustomed to using KineMaster and that is what I'm gonna be sticking with. I've learned, I've put in the time to learn all the tools, to learn all the little features that it has all over the place. I've taken the time to learn it. So I've made an investment already in the application and I am quite pleased honestly with how it performs, even though it's an Android app. I mean, imagine, it's just an Android app that pretty much functions like a full, full editor on a Chromebook. So what more can you possibly ask for? I mean, we have been waiting for a while now for Adobe Rush to come out with a full-fledged video editor on a Chromebook and so far they've let us down. Nothing has been released. So we've had to get creative and come up with other ideas. So here we are. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit that bell so you can get notified when I post new videos. Thank you. Have a good day. Dumbest,